Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday and today what I wanted to cover is how to get up and running with Gatsby using TypeScript. And more specifically, we're going to look at some of the gotchas or common patterns you'll see using TypeScript with React projects in general. So not at all specific to Gatsby, just um, things you run into like passing props down, replacing prop types with uh, TypeScript typing, and how to do stuff like uh, deal with refs and, um, and events. So let's get started. We're going to create a new Gatsby app. So I believe it's Gatsby new and then the name of the app. So we will just call this demo demo. All right, so this is pretty quick to get up and running. And it doesn't come with TypeScript off the bat, but what Gatsby does come with is uh, a plugin you can add that basically does most of the config for you. Um, it's just a matter of installing that plugin and then making a couple tweaks and then you're off to the races. All righty. Sweet. Okay. So now we're going to go into demo demo and we will open our code. Okay, so here's the basic uh, React Gatsby app that comes when you just use the, the Gatsby CLI to create a new one. And what we wanna go is into this config file. So this is where you add all of your Gatsby plugins. And we specifically wanna add a plugin called Gatsby Plugin TypeScript. So before we can do anything here, we need to add that. So yarn add Gatsby Plugin TypeScript. And as it's doing that, we'll just come back here and we can go and add it to the bottom. So here we'll add Gatsby plugin TypeScript. Okay. So that finished and we're good. So right now you could start using TypeScript in your app. That's all you have to do. But we're going to make a couple other tweaks. Uh, one thing I like to do is add a tsconfig.json file. And this is where you can override some of the compiler defaults that TypeScript uh, allows you to configure. So I found a nice one I like, which is actually from the Gatsby starter TypeScript. Um, I can never remember these things. So what I typically do is find another recommended project and, and go based off that rather than trying to, to brew my own. So we'll just paste this in here. And a couple things I wanted to point out is uh what's this complaining about no inputs were found in config file what did i do wrong i don't think anything we'll just go with it so one thing to point out is this js pro jsx property here so the two values you'll typically use on react web projects are uh, if you hover it shows you but preserve or react um, so what preserve does is it basically keeps, keeps JSX as is. So that means you have another processor like Babel that's going to come along afterwards and do the actual conversion of JSX into, into normal JavaScript code. Uh, secondly, you've got React, which is what would actually do the conversion for you into JavaScript code. Another one I like is, I like is strict true, just to, to enforce all of the um, the very strict rules of TypeScript, so you end up with cleaner code. Um, I like these ones too. Uh, no unused locals. Just don't don't create variables that um, that aren't being used. All right. So let's just assume that this is working, and let's start up our app. If it's not, it will probably freak out. Okay, cool. So here we have the standard Gatsby app running. Now we're not actually using any TypeScript yet. So we have to go in and start renaming our files. So specifically, we're gonna be looking at the pages and components that it comes with by default. And even before we do that, I like to add a couple extra libraries which provide some additional typing support. So we're gonna add Types React, Types React DOM, 
And just because I know we need it, actually, we'll deal with it when we get to it. What did I do? Yarn. Okay. So while that's going, let's start to convert our index page into TypeScript. So to do that, all you're going to do is rename the .js file to TSX, and immediately it's telling us two errors. So what it's saying is that it could not find a declaration file for components image. And the reason for this is basically just that this image component hasn't been converted yet into TypeScript, so TypeScript doesn't know what sort of types that it produces. So let's come in here and rename this to TSX. And it looks like that solves that issue, so we can come back here and see that it's gone away. So we'll do the same to layout. Okay, so layout has other issues that we need to fix. We'll get the easy one done first, uh, this helmet error. Uh, so it could not find a declaration file for React Helmet. And basically what this means is that it doesn't know what type this helmet is. Helmet provides um, types that we can import into our project. So we'll do yarn add types react helmet. And that will solve that error. Let's wait for that to install. There we go. So maybe I have to close it. Yeah, so now it's solved that error. So we have two other ones here. We'll solve the children one first. Um, we haven't told it what type this children is. Now we've got prop types down here. So we know that children is going to be a type of node and it's required. Let's actually get rid of prop types because as we're working in TypeScript, we no longer have to rely on sort of runtime type checks that uh, React provides. We can type it ourselves with TypeScript. So what we're going to define is an interface that we'll call props. And an interface is basically, it's almost like prop types. It's a, way, it's a way to define a shape. What does your data look like? So we're talking about these props here being sent to our functional layout component. So we're receiving one thing called children. And what is children? So children is um, a React node. And we can actually import that from this React library. So React node. And then we can use that here, uh, that children will be a React node. And now we have to tell our layout component that the arguments being received match this interface. So we can just put a colon, say that you're going to be receiving props, which looks like this. It's going to be a ch children, which is a React node. OK, so we're almost done in this file. We just have to go clean up header, which has not yet been converted to TypeScript. So we'll rename that. We can actually clean up the prop types because they're not needed. And we'll come here and we will de declare another interface for our props which receives the site title, which is a string. Okay, so there we go, we've solved that, which fixes our layout. So coming all the way back here, we've fixed our index page. Let's just make sure everything's working still. So Gatsby develop. Okay, so refresh, everything looks to still be good. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show is basically how to solve some common patterns that you see. Uh, I guess we can do this first. So TSX, no errors, great, page two. TSX, also an error, no errors. All right. So on the home page, let's put a form which has an event attached to it 
which will have an input with a ref. So there'll be a few things we need to figure out how to type properly. So I'm going to create a component called a name form. And up at the top, we'll just import React from React. And we will do, we'll do a class-based form. So we'll export default class name form, which extends from react.component. And in here, we'll have our render function, which will return our form. And our form will have an input of type text, like that. And then we'll have a button to submit this form. Okay. So this form does nothing yet. So let's start by first defining a ref for this input so that we can extract its value uh, that the user enters from it. So we're going to define our ref up here by saying that we have a name ref and we'll say that it's equal to react.createRef. Okay. So then we come down here with this name ref and we attach it to our input. So we say ref is this dot name ref. And we have some errors. So if we hover this, we can see that what this input, specifically the ref prop is expecting, uh, it's a little bit confusing, but what it's expecting to receive is something that's a ref object um, of type HTML input element. So that's actually what we have, but we need to come up here and tell our variable up here, name ref, the type that it's going to receive back from create ref. Uh, the only reason this has an error is because uh, we should have to say react dot. Um, alternatively, you can bring it in like that to solve it. Okay, so that fixed that error. And now let's handle when the user submits the form. So we'll first start by saying on submit, we want you to call something called handle submit. Okay, so that doesn't exist yet, but we'll define it here. So handle submit equals an event. And before we get into the function, we just need to figure out um, this error. First of all, it's giving in a scenario because we haven't used it. So if we do that, we still have an issue. Um, it's complaining that we used an any type. And any is basically, could be anything, it's not sure. So it, it, when it's any, it can't really help you out too much in terms of uh, type checking. So what we want to do is specifically set it to a type. So we'll do that by saying colon so we can say what type of type it is. And we can figure that out just by coming here and hovering the on submit. So it's saying that it's going to send us an event which is of this type. So we can copy that and paste it up here. So what is our event? It's a form event specifically typed to the HTML form element. So now we can continue and all I want to do is basically alert to the screen whatever name the person filled in. So we'll say alert and we'll access our name ref. Um, this type of ref, it provides you uh, an attribute called current, which is the actual input element itself. And then current, we can access the value. So by doing this, we get an error. So let's hover and see what that error is. So it's saying that, that the object is possibly null. So what would that mean is if if current here happens to be null, because the first time you declare it, before it's really had a chance to render and attach itself to this input, current is null. So on a null, you can't call value, so it's freaking out a little bit. So what we can do is just put in a statement around this. And before I do that, just a little bit more. If you hover the current, you can see that what is current it is either an HTML input element or null. So we want to deal with this null case right here. And we can do that with an if statement. So if this.nameref.current, if those are there, 
now we can alert the value. So let's try this component out. And we'll do that by coming back to our index page and importing it. So import name form from components name form. And we'll just put it right under this high people. Okay. So we come back here. I guess I'm not running. So something inside of uh, Gatsby itself crashed. Not sure why, but we'll just start up Gatsby again. All right, so we come back here, refresh the page. We have our little form and when we type this in and submit it, it pops up that the name is Lee. So what we just covered there was basically how to handle a couple specific React things in TypeScript, namely how to define a ref correctly, how to deal with the issue of the current might be null, so we can't call value if it's null, and when you deal with form events, how do you sort of A, determine what type of event you're going to receive from that, uh, that event? And then you can copy that and bring it up here so that it knows what to expect. Because then if you try to call some prevent something function, it's not going to allow you because it, know that, it knows that prevent something doesn't exist on this type of, or this type. So prevent default. Cool. The last thing I wanted to show was coming back here to the header component. Uh, this is a functional component. And so far, um, other than the, the name form that I created, all of the ones that come with Gatsby by default are functional components. But I never gave an example of how to basically declare the, the props coming in to a class-based component. So let's just convert this quickly into a class-based component. So we'll do that by just saying export default class header, which extends from react, oh boy, react.component. And then we have our render function, which returns all of this stuff. Okay. And then we'll just clean up the unused stuff code at the bottom. So how do we define what props that this header component is going to receive. So we still have our interface back here up at the top. And what you do is you use angly brackets where you can pass this interface here so you can say what sorts of props it's going to be receiving. And uh, so it's complaining here because I haven't extracted those off of the props. There we go. So it looks like we're all good. Once I refresh, we've got our, our header now working from a class-based component. And we've got our form, which is all type checked. And we've converted our entire Gatsby project from JS to TypeScript. Um, the only ones you can't really convert to TypeScript are these uh, Gatsby config node SSR files. And that's because all of these files run sort of in the compilation stage, which is before it's had a chance to go through the TypeScript and Babel processing to convert, um, to convert into, um, to go through the process of from going from TypeScript to like common JS that can run in a browser or in, in Node specifically. And that's why you see the old style of export here, the module dot exports. Uh, does it import anything here? No. But if it were to import anything, it would use the require syntax because this code's actually running sort of in the node environment, not in the post-processed TypeScript uh, Babel world. So that's why these files aren't TypeScript. So hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.